Hi friends, uh, welcome to Dr. Ram's uh, medical coding training sessions. I hope all of you are safe. This session is about the nervous system. My humble appeal is, please pass this video to any student who is preparing for NEET exam. This will be of tremendous helpful to all of them. Well, let's start with the system. Talking about the nervous system, by the word itself we understand that this system is going to involve the nerve. A nerve is also called as a neuron which is a structural and a functional unit of the nervous system. To study the system, we need to know the broad classification of its organ system. For instance, we can study as NS is equal to CNS plus PNS. You can have this formula in your mind when you are going to study this nervous system. NS is equal to CNS plus PNS. NS is a nervous system. CNS as central nervous system and PNS as peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system has various other classifications like the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. How you can remember this as PA is PAS, P for peripheral nervous system, A for autonomic nervous system, and yes for somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is also divided as the sympathetic nervous system, the parasympathetic system and the enteric system. Whereas the somatic system can be classified as a craniospinal system whereby we will study the cranial system and the peripheral system by way of the nerves. Let's move on to the CNS. Here brain and spinal cord are included and you all know brain as a command center that information or instruction is being sent to various organs through this central organ which is the brain we can study this brain into various structures you can see the brain as being in the form of a largest structure called as the cerebrum the cerebrum is in the form of various lobes like the frontal the parietal occipital and the temporal and each of these lobes have specific functions there is a little brain called as a cerebellum which is also called as arbor vitae which means the tree of life the cerebrum is in the form of two hemispheres we call it as cerebral hemispheres and these are united by a band of tissue called as corpus callosum corpus callosum binds the two cerebral hemispheres and these include the lateral ventricles through which the CSF is being produced. CSF is a cerebrospinal fluid and that is being produced by the choroid plexus or the ependymal cells which lie within these ventricles. We are moving on to the next part of the brain which is the interbrain which contains structures such as thalamus, subthalamus, hypothalamus and epithalamus. Then we have this brain stem which includes the midbrain, pons and medulla oblongata. Pons is actually the center for respiration and medulla contains various vital centers. Medulla oblongata, it leaves the brain. The cranial cavity has now become the vertebral cavity and there is a foramen in the cranial fossa especially in the posterior cranial fossa which we call it as the foramen magnum it is through the foramen magnum the medulla downwards continues as the spinal cord now spinal cord is also a part of the brain but that it has exited the foramen magnum and this terminates at the level of lumbar vertebra l1 to l2 and it is in the form of a cone shaped structure called as conus medullaris and a tapering structure called as phylum terminale. The brain and spinal cord are also enveloped by membranes called as meninges. There are three meninges pia mater, arachnoid membrane, and dura mater. Pia mater closely encircles the brain and the spinal cord, and so we call it as a leptomeninges. The arachnoid membrane is in the form of a spider web and so it has got its name as arachnoid membrane and here this also forms part of the leptomeninges as this is also thin wall. The outermost layer which is a dura mater 
It is the most tough membrane and we call it as a packed meninges. The meninges of the spinal cord, we call it as spinal meninges. Let's move on to the somatic aspect in the sense the cranial nerves and the peripheral nerves in the sense like the spinal nerves. The cranial nerves arise directly from the brain and so they have got the name as cranial nerves. You will certainly be asked to name all these cranial nerves in the same order as I am going to tell you. These cranial nerves are 12 in number and these are paired structures. So we have 12 pairs of cranial nerves. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve, second as the optic nerve, third as the ocular motor, fourth as a trochlear nerve, fifth as a trigeminal nerve, sixth is a abducens nerve, seventh is a facial nerve, eighth is the acoustic nerve or the vestibular cochlear nerve which arises from this cochlea and the vestibule, ninth is a glossopharyngeal nerve, tenth is a vagus nerve, eleventh is the accessory spinal nerve and twelfth as a hypoglossal nerve. You will have to say this in the order as mentioned because these are questions which can be asked to a novice to medical coding. Let's move on to the spinal nerves and these nerves arise from the spinal cord on each side the right and the left and they exit the spinal cord through this foramen. These are 31 pairs in number and we can classify them as the cervical nerves as 8 thoracic as 12. Here a word of caution is needed. There are just 7 vertebra in the cervical region but we have 8 spinal nerves. The thoracic region contains 12 nerves. The lumbar and the sacral regions contains 5 nerves from each of these regions and the coccygeal nerve is one and this would result in 31 pairs of spinal nerves. Let's move on to some of these medical terms that are involved with the nervous system. As we have discussed already, leptomeninges, it is a pia mater and is arachnoid membrane and pachy meninges we call it as a dura mater. The inner core of the intervertebral disc which lies in between the two vertebrae we call it as a nucleus pulposus and the horse tail which is nothing but the nerves that arise in the spinal cord have a tail like appearance as that of a horse and we call it as horse tail or corda equina. Corda means tail region and equina means horse. We can report weakness with the suffix as paresis and algia as pain. Let's move on to the pathological conditions. Encephalitis. Brain is termed as encephalon, itis as inflammation. So inflammation of the brain we call it as encephalitis. In case there is inflammation of the spinal cord we call it as myelitis. Myelo refers to the spinal cord and a word of caution is needed again because myelo, M-Y-E-L-O can also mean the bone marrow. There is a condition called as osteomyelitis. Osteo refers to bone, myelo as bone marrow and itis as inflammation. In osteomyelitis, there is inflammation of the bone and bone marrow. Whereas in poliomyelitis, polio refers to the gray matter of the spinal cord. When there is inflammation of the gray matter of the spinal cord, we call it as poliomyelitis. Polio refers to the gray matter Milo as spinal cord and itis as inflammation. When you join all of these terms, we get the term as poliomyelitis. Epilepsy is a neurological disorder in which there is convulsions or seizures. Myasthenia gravis. Please break this word. Myo plus asthenia plus gravis. Myo refers to muscle, asthenia is weakness, gravis as gravid. It is a gravid disorder in which there is weakness of the muscles. Hemiplegia is a condition in which there is paralysis on one side of the body. Hemi refers to half and plegia as paralysis. If paralysis occurs bilaterally we call it as paraplegia and if it involves the entire four extremities we call it as quadriplegia. When the space in the spinal cavity which is a vertebral column is reduced we call it as spinal stenosis and this could be because of various degenerative disorders of the spine. Spina bifida is a condition in which 
the vertebrae fail to fuse. IVDB is a condition in which there is intervertebral disc prolapse. This can result in herniation of the disc and thereby causing radiculopathy or even myelopathy in the sense like this herniated disc can cause compression of this nerves that arise from the spinal cord and of course the spinal cord itself. So that would result in radiculopathy or a myelopathy. Let's see some of this surgical procedures that are done under this neurological system. Craniotomy is a procedure in which an incision of this cranial bones is being done and craniectomy involves excision of part of this bone. EEG is a technique which is electroencephalogram where the electrical activity of the brain is being recorded. Discectomy is a procedure in which the intervertebral disc is being partially or completely removed. Corpectomy, corpus means body. In corpectomy, the body of the vertebra is being removed, whereas in carpectomy, the carpal bones, namely the wrist bones, are being removed. We have injections like LESI and RSI. LESI is a lumbar epidural steroid injections and RSI is a root sleeve injection. Duroplasty refers to the repair of this dura mater. Neuroplasty as a repair of the nerve that has been injured. And finally, hypophysectomy. Hypophysis refers to the pituitary gland. And removal of this pituitary gland or the tumors in the pituitary gland, we call it as hypophysectomy. As the pituitary gland is located in the middle cranial fossa, hypophysectomy needs to be reported as a neurological procedure. Let's go to the coding aspect of this neurological procedures and conditions. In the ICD 10 CM, the neurological conditions are being reported with the codes that begin with the alphabet G. The psychiatric conditions and mental and behavioral disturbances are reported with the alphabet F. Now coming to the CPT manual, the CPT section contains the 60,000 series for reporting the procedures on the nervous system. Let's go to a coding scenario where a 20 gauge needle is being inserted into the lumbar region and that too into the subarachnoid space whereby the excess CSF is being removed and this is being done for the treatment of hydrocephalus. Now let's see the coding for this procedure. The diagnosis code that we can report here is a G91.9 as a condition is hydrocephalus. Hydro refers to water and cephalus is brain. It literally means the presence of water which is nothing but the excessive cerebrospinal fluid. And we can report this procedure with the CPT code 62272. I hope this session would have been very useful to you all. Please let me know if you have any queries. I will see you in the next session with a new topic. Thank you and take care till then. You can contact us at 805-60-855-96-99-62-791072.